software by profession, but I do this for a hobby. And this is my project, Filmulator, which is a photo editor specifically for raw camera photos um, that simulates the development of film. It's not a new project, but it may be new to many of you. And I started it way back in 2012. So, uh, what is Filmulator? It's a raw photo editor. Uh, with library management, including uh, importing and moving files around, uh, that emphasizes three things. Uh, simplicity over flexibility, um, ease of learning for new users, and the streamlined workflow for experienced users. And in addition to that, it uses a tone mapping algorithm that simulates the chemical action of film development um, to achieve great results. So. It's different in many ways from existing photo editors. So, for example, I only have like 20 or so tools total in Filmulator compared to pages and pages and pages and pages of tools that may do the same thing multiple different ways. So, um, I try to strike a new balance between flexibility and ease of use. Um, other tools might Prefer the flexibility, I prefer ease of use in Filmulator. Um, one thing that when I started the project, I was very insistent on was having a very polished editor view. Um, so it has unconstrained smooth zooming uh, about the mouse cursor anywhere in the frame. Um, back when I started this, a lot of the photo editors had kind of janky zooming, and uh, panning is very slow in other editors, although they've greatly improved since. Um, but I can have 60 FPS, full resolution, 4K screen panning around um, at any zoom level in Filmulator. And it also has a fast preview with the same pipeline, so you get uh, responsiveness to the sliders. Um, and then eventually it recomputes at full resolution. Um, another difference with uh, many of the popular raw editors like Raw Therapy and Darktable is that I actually support importing from card. So I like to have it all in one tool. I don't want to have to use a Rapid Photo Downloader or um, Digicam before switching over to a separate image editor. I like to have it all in one program. And so uh, Filmulator lets you copy from a card or import in place, and it does simultaneous backup with uh, hash, uh, it checks the hash of the files after it writes to verify uh, secure copying. Um, and also, you can have it automatically create a directory structure for your photos so that you don't have to organize them manually. Um, another thing that I tried to emphasize is that a lot of these other applications prefer to keep uh, very minimal user interface uh, help, I would say, like tool tips that are entirely unhelpful sometimes. Um, like on the right, it says vibrance, the amount of vibrance. Frankly, I'd say that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Whereas in Filmulator, I tried to explain every tool in clear language, um, even if it's, a, if it's a little verbose, I also try to make the tooltips stay out of the way. So in real use by a power user, they never get in the way, but for a new user, they're there to help. Um, there is a manual too, with explanations of all the tools and when to use them. So it's not like I'm skimping on that aspect. Um, but what might be the most interesting part about Filmulator is the film aspect. So when I started photography, I learned on actual film with that camera you see there um, in high school. And when I went to college, I got a DSLR for the first time. And I found that I was actually <coughs> rather disappointed by the photos. Um, I really couldn't put my finger on why I didn't like the digital photos. Something about the color, something about the way they rendered skies. And so I racked my brain for like two years over what, what is it about film that just looks good. And so what I realized was that um, after a few times when I developed film myself, um, I asked myself, why is there an agitation step? If you're not familiar with film, you pour liquid into a tank that contains the film, and every few minutes you shake it. And I was wondering what the shaking was doing, and I realized that the aspect of film development that this shaking does is 
uh, it causes the diffusion of the film of the developer around to uh, be make it uniform again. So what happens when films uh, exposed is that silver grains are uh, activated in different parts of the film. Uh, in brighter regions, more silver grains are activated, and in darker regions, fewer are. Um, just it's a stochastic process. And what happens when you put the developer in a liquid chemical? is that the parts with more activated silver grains consume more of the developer, and that slows the rate of development in the bright areas. And it, this depletion reduces the global dynamic range. But at the same time, because it's in a liquid, the liquid diffuses between adjacent <coughs> regions of the film, and the local contrast is enhanced by the bright regions stealing the plentiful developer from the nearby dark regions, and the dark regions stay darker because they lost the developer to nearby bright regions. And so all I had to do is mimic the process instead of having to try and make a stab at the end result. So by literally simulating film development, it just makes the images look better. So what does it do? It, lowers global contrast. In this image, I've uh, raised the exposure, but the film aspect has reduced the highlight brightness so that the overall global contrast is much lower. Although that's an extreme example, and typically I wouldn't push it that far in real use. It also raises local contrast. So you can see uh, the clouds have more detail, the building has more pop, and if you look in the tight crop, you can see that the tiles have more contrast and more color. And additionally, it naturally boosts the color in a way that will never induce clipping. Um, what happens is the three color channels are basically three layers of film, and if one of the layers is significantly brighter than the other, it does the same stealing of developer, basically, from the other two layers. And so in the case here, the red channel steals from the blue and green channels and enhances the color. And in this particular case, the actual flowers were just red. And the weird thing is that no matter what I could do in other programs, it was very difficult to remove the orange and yellow that appeared when I take a photo of it. Um, I have another, all sorts of uh, other interesting touches in the user interface, for example, I expose the pipeline, which helps it, makes it easier to learn what each tool does. So at uh, various points in the pipeline, which is, the tools are in pipeline order from top to bottom, um, you can see before the film step we have a histogram, and after the film step we have a histogram, and of course we have the end result histogram at the top. And so you can see um, in a linear space what white balance is doing in exposure compensation. You can see how your highlights are behaving. Is the highlight recovery working? Did I clip a channel um, without needing to <coughs> guess at it from the end result? Um, in addition, um, in the organization view, uh, I have a histogram of photos taken per day, so it's very easy to find a trip you went on or a photo shoot you had where you took a lot of photos, although recently I've seen this in Darktable, so it's not unique to me. Um, and I also put a lot of effort into a very nice cropping tool in Filmulator that uh, you only press one button and it enables you to choose aspect ratios as you wish and it's just super polished. Um, you hold control to lock the aspect ratio and you can press shift to snap to preset aspect ratios um, and it'll just choose the nearest one and size accordingly. So um, a little bit about how we got here. Back when I first started in 2012, a friend and I uh, started just with a MATLAB prototype, and this was uh, extremely slow. It ran, it took minutes and minutes and minutes to process a single uh, one megapixel image. And then we, over time, we enhanced it with speed. We uh, implemented it in C++, we multi-threaded it, um, changed memory accesses and stuff. And then we also uh, changed it so that the workflow is smoother. So instead of you having to feed it TIFFs, it would generate them. And then eventually, uh, I created the GUI. And that's how we've gotten here. However, um, recently, the, li the Libra uh, 
uh, project which we were relying on for loading and demosaicing, removed the better demosaicing algorithms from the demosaic packs. They discontinued them. So, um, in order to support this functionality in Filmulator, uh, I started LibRT process, which is a name might be subject to change. Um, and we took GPL licensed algorithms from Raw Therapy and now are sharing this with any other project that likes to use this library. Um, and this is better than what uh, Libra had, which were 10 year old versions of these algorithms. Now they're maintained, now they are much faster and uh, we have more stuff too. So um, these film is very usable right now, but there's a lot of things that it's missing. Um, things I'd like to add in the future are noise reduction, sharpening, um, distortion correction for lenses, um, deleting images, tagging images, calling images as you import, and building for windows. Um, but there are things that I don't plan, which is basically anything with not very much return on user interface complexity. So if you want uh, split toning or more local adjustments, I'd ask that you just use them in another tool. Um, so who is Filmulator for? Filmulator is for people who find post-processing to be a chore, more or less. Uh, that's, that was my approach to it. I didn't like spending 15 minutes on a photo to make it look good. Now I spend 20 to 30 seconds per photo. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to use presets. So I, if you want the final creative say in every image you output, um, Filmulator can give you a result quickly. On the other hand, it's only for people who want a natural looking result. If you want the most capable, flexible program, if you want like uh, cross-processing emulation or uh, glitch art or something, or if you like spending an hour dodging and burning each image, this is not really the program for you. Um, or if you want technical accuracy, um, it's generally designed for pleasingness over accuracy and simplicity or flexibility. So if you'd like to, to, please check it out and join us on the Pixels forum where I have a subcategory. Uh, I'd like to thank my friend uh, Omer for starting the project with me and all sorts of other people from the community for helping me out, including making an app of <coughs> continuous integration from the last presentation. And I'd also like to thank the whole open source community for inspiring me and encouraging me to give back. Any questions?